this is Mick Holly from SBTI. I'm Head of Strategy and I'm excited to tell you about a course we've designed for you called Financial Results Mastery. It's uh, aimed at you, uh, strategic change agents, senior leaders, continuous improvement professionals within the business who are all looking to make a greater impact on the business. And when I say impact, I'm talking about you know, how do we grow higher revenues, how do we improve our profitability, how do we create more sustainable and more predictable cash flow, and how do we create that presence in the organization to be seen as one of the key go-to people that can really move the dial on business performance. Now, I've been working for companies for over 30 years, helping them design and execute major strategic change programs. And one of the core competencies of SBTI over the last 17 years has been helping organizations acquire the right problem-solving tools, put them into a change management methodology to deliver lasting cultural impact. Now, what we've discovered is that not all change is equal and not all projects have the same measurable impact on performance. So the question becomes, how do we work on the right projects? How do we earn the right to partner with the uh, executives in the organisation to drive the right kind of significant or transformational change? So are you experiencing some of these frustrations? You have some great ideas as to the, the kind of projects that would deliver immense value for the organisation, um, but you can't get the support or you can't get the programme or initiative to be launched. Or indeed, you're actually working on a project, and we know in organisations all change is, is challenging. And you're working extremely hard, you're overcoming resistance, you know, you're driving the results, but at the end of the day, you know that those results, while measurable, might not be changing you know, the, the business in a more significant way. You just wish there was more impact for the amount of pain and frustration uh, that you're having and driving this change. And, and lastly, you're seeing operational improvement, but those results aren't quite manifesting themselves in the financial statements. So people are scratching their heads saying, you know, should we really continue with this? Is this worthwhile? Is this the right thing to do? Is there a different way to do it? And then, you know, support for your methodology, for your change effort might wane and you might not get the opportunity to complete it. So those are some of the frustrations that we see within the organisation. Here at SBTI, we've got a unique solution for you and it's called the Financial uh, Results Mastery Course. And essentially what it will do is it will link your projects and initiatives to the financial statements. So uh, financial statements, I know they can be a little mysterious, but here's the thing. In all businesses all over the globe, whatever language is spoken in that country, there's one universal language, and that is the language of finance, the language of the financial statements. Uh, but not many people can speak this language. To many people, it's like hieroglyphics before the Rosetta Stone was invented. It's just a bunch of meaningless numbers. So if you could actually learn this language, and this is what this course is going to teach you, you'll be in an elite group of people who can master the language of finance, which is an absolute foundation uh, for business excellence. So you're going to be able to link your projects, you're going to be able to identify more significant projects using the financial statement. So here's what we do with uh, financial results mastery. First of all, we are going to convert those boring numbers into a compelling story. And people really love story. That's what motivates people. It compels people to take action. Secondly, any, any great story has characters and the financial story has three. I'll talk about them uh, later on. But those characters and the way that they interact, they're always in eternal conflict and understanding how the characters interact and the nature of that conflict is going to give you real insight into you know, how the business is performing. Um, we're, going to give, we're going to take those financial statements, we're going to take all of the numbers out and have four basic building blocks that you can work with, a real Lego set uh, for financial statements, if you will. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to tell the story in five 
easily mastered chapters, just five simple chapters. And we'll show you just by uh, uh, understanding those five simple chapters, you can interrogate any business, understand any business strategy and identify areas for improvement within your own business. Then we're going to combine those building blocks plus the story and the understanding of the characters and we are going to create a treasure map. And that treasure map is going to lead you to um, hidden value within your organisation. And think about it. I mean, how powerful would it be if you could power your initiatives by excitement rather than by mandate? So we can enrol people in the treasure hunt and have them be heroes and find improvement opportunities. It's a great way to combine you know, financial impact with engagement within the organisation. So let's go into a little bit more detail about how we do this. Now don't worry, this isn't going to be a boring accounting course. I know what it's like looking at numbers. Uh, I mean, I sit in lots of meetings where people put tons and tons of spreadsheets, lots of numbers, and I'm wondering, how are they arriving at that conclusion? Where did she get that, that number from? Is she combining two numbers? Which column should be I looking at? I mean, I've, I actually feel a little bit idiotic in some of those meetings. How powerful would it be if you understood what was behind those numbers and then you asked great questions? Because driving change, being seen as a leader, it, in part is about asking the right questions, asking challenging questions, and people will look sort of, wow, how did, he, how did she come up with that? Where did that question come from? Wow, that's really powerful thinking. So this is what we're going to do. We're not going to be doing an accounting course where we're looking at income statements, balance sheets, ledgers, debits, credits, double entry bookkeeping. No, we're going to take the numbers out of it so that you can get the real meaning behind that. And here's how we're going to do that. So the first thing is we're going to understand those three characters. Now, there is an expression you've probably heard, cash is king. Well, the longer expression is revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is king. Revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, cash is king. So our three characters are vanity, sanity, and king. And just by understanding how those three characters choreograph their activities within a business gives you real insight. It's a metaphor for how the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows work together. So you don't need to understand the detail of those three statements. You can actually observe those characters and deduce some real insight. So we've got the characters. Second thing is, we're going to give you some basic building blocks, sort of a Lego set for financial statements, if you will. So instead of that boring income statement, we're going to have the money-making machine. I, mean, I go into businesses and I ask people, how does the business make money? And quite often they don't know the answer. And, and you know, they go from meeting to meeting to meeting. I ask them, when, when you sit in that meeting for two hours every week, what do you talk about? How do you know those things link to our ability to make money, our ability to drive profit, our ability to generate cash? If they don't know the answer to that, then you're hoping that those activities will lead to the right kind of financial outcomes. And as we know, hope is not a strategy. So we've got the money-making machine, and that shows how we convert vanity sales, we manage uh, uh, sanity's costs that drop down to gross profit. We take out some operating expenses. We get net profit. And right at the bottom of the money-making machine, you pull the lever and out comes retained earnings. That's our equity fuel. So what do we do with that fuel? We need to put it into an engine that will generate more wealth for the business. And so the balance sheet becomes the wealth creation engine and like any engine we want it to run as lean as possible we don't want to put rich too much rich fuel in there and burn it inefficiently we want to convert that very efficiently into cash and to profits so at the bottom of the of the engine we put in our equity fuel so businesses can only draw sources of funds from two places from debt or equity so if there's not enough equity coming from the money-making machine, then the king has to go and borrow some money in the form of debt. So debt plus equity is our funding. And we use that to invest. 
We make investments in assets, we might make investments in working capital, and vanity and sanity then use those investments to generate more sales, more profit that turns into that fuel. So we've got the money-making machine generating the equity fuel, the equity fuel going into the wealth creation engine. We're driving that engine very leanly with smart investments that allow us to go make more sales and to grow that whole cycle. So those are the first two building blocks the money-making machine and the wealth creation engine. Our third block is our story block. I mentioned earlier that there are five chapters to the story. So chapter one is all about the quality of the revenue growth. Did we grow? So chapter one is all about that. Chapter two is all about superior profitability. So let's say vanity managed to grow sales by 10%, but profitability only grew by 5%. Hmm. There's a dysfunction there. So what if, if we were able to keep our cost base fairly static and our fixed costs you know, fairly static, when we grow our revenues, we should be able to grow our profitability at a higher level than our revenue growth. That would be superior profitability. So chapter two is about profitability. Chapter three is all about how we make our wealth creation engine more efficient. It's all about working capital management something that managers can easily influence. So chapters one, chapters two, and chapters three combine to give chapter four, which is all about cash. Now, some of you may be working on some cash projects, and if you're working on in chapter four, chasing the cash, you're in the wrong place because the cause of cash consum consumption or cash generation has occurred in chapters one, chapters two, and chapter three. And our story will tell you, do I focus on chapter one, do I focus on chapter two, or do I focus on chapter three? Now, the first four chapters all combine to give chapter five, which is our value measure for the business, our return on capital employed. Don't get too worried about return on capital employed or the acronym ROKI. All it means is it's the, uh, the money-making ability of the money-making machine times the efficiency in which we operate our wealth creation engine allows us to maximize our return. So it's another way of giving us a bellwether as to where our performance needs to be. So those are three blocks. Money-making machine, wealth creation engine, story, and in the bottom box, the fourth box, are the clues to our treasure. And we'll interrogate each of those five chapters. We'll look at the behavior of Vanity, Sanity, and King to understand where those opportunities are for improvement. Now, the beautiful thing about the financial statements is there is no politics in the financial statements. There are no silos in the financial statements. So you can spot opportunities that are really significant and really will empower you to identify great projects and also have this absolute causal link between financial outcomes and initiative activity. So I think you're gonna enjoy being able to, you know, summarize an entire business strategy on one page with the treasure map and set people off on a treasure hunt to go and capture that. Now, one thing that, uh, that I uh, have for you is we have a free PDF download of this financial statement story. For those of you who want a little bit more info, info and to be, for this message to be reinforced. And the other thing that uh, I'm gonna be able to show you is I'm gonna show you how to create a treasure map. Now, you're not gonna be able to read this but I am gonna show you how to create this map, this treasure map with the clues and, and treasure identification in the next video. And this will guide your activities and will give you real insight into business performance. So I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Please download the PDF and we look forward to seeing you again.